This is your brother, Imam Ahmed Al Hadi Sharif. Inshallah, tonight we will start our program, very interesting program, the program that we named The Journey to Islam. Tonight we have a special guest with us, Brother Josh Angel, also known as Mu'ad, Brother Mu'ad Angel. Um, that music is very, I mean, even throughout the world, music is something that is common amongst all people. So my, my um, upbringing was no different. Uh, I was raised with music playing day in and day out. There was never a day that went by except that the music was turned to 11 and you're knowing your neighbors next door. And that's just how I lived. And then when I was 15 years old, I told myself I had my whole entire wall covered with musicians. I mean, you couldn't tell me the color of my wall. It was just musicians, whether they be guitarists, drummers, vocalists, singers, you name it. And it was my life. I was 101% dedicated to it. I remember clearly like it was yesterday, I was 15 years old, I looked at those people on that wall and I said someday I'm going to become the greatest guitar player that ever lived. And from that moment on, I literally dedicated every single moment of free time that I had without exaggeration to that. I had two guitars in my bathroom. That tells you how dedicated I was. I mean, literally, uh, before I slammed, you know, I had girlfriends, of course, and literally the girlfriends would get jealous because You're I would okay. tell them, go away, because I want to play guitar. I mean, I would wake up, my guitar would be in my hand, my aunt would still be on, I would sit up, and I would start playing from there. And I would, there was guitars in my car. If I was going to get some milk out the fridge, I had a guitar in my hand. I mean, that's how dedicated I was. And I did that for many, many, many years. And then uh, some things kind of led to me getting maybe a little bit discouraged. Uh, we just couldn't get a, keep a band together. And right around that same time, I met uh, a Muslim. Okay. Before that, inshallah, yes. we're going to hear enough about it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, your background, your family. Yes. Be a Christian. My mom had to drag me out of bed every Sunday. I hated going to church, like most kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to sleep in on my day off before I had to go back to school. But unfortunately, you know, she used to drag me to church every every Sunday. We'd have to do choir. You know, we'd sing in the church. We'd do all the things that we we're supposed to do as uh, you know, taught as Christians. And um, at the same time, I always had doubts. Like things didn't just necessarily make sense to me as to you know the Trinity and things like that of that nature. So by the time, even though I was still, you know, of course, under my mom's supervision, so I got to do what she tells me, by the time I was 12, 13, I had already basically given up on Christianity and just said I was going to be, I guess you would say agnostic, where I believed in God, but I didn't have a true religion that I, you know, I deemed that was mine. You don't have proper knowledge of it. So I do remember being in high school, and there being threats of one in particular where it was said that the Muslims were planning to hijack the school buses <laughs> so and they were going to blow them up. <laughs> and me being 15 years old, freshman in high school, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything. I didn't have no Muslim friends, no family members were Muslim. Mm -hmm. And so all I knew was what I heard. And I was like, Psh. man, I like to see one of the Muslims try to, you know, I'm, gonna, you know, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight for myself and my family. So mm -hmm. that's all I knew. And uh, eventually, uh, you know, like I said, once again, going back to, I finally met a Muslim and it took me meeting that person for me to have a completely different perspective on what Islam was. Before then, mm -hmm. I was, I, I was not, not afraid as if, uh, you know, I'm not going to protect myself, but cautious and leery of like, are these people really out to harm us? Mm -hmm. There's more questions and then when you start hearing the oneness of Allah, Mm -hmm. His unique oneness, that there is nothing, there's nothing like unto Him. And you, you think back, because I, I remember thinking when I was a kid, back, you know, back in the days when I was drugged to Sunday, you know, Sunday school and church and all these things, I'm like, how, how is God a man? You know, a man, He needs so much, He needs to eat, He needs to sleep, He needs to use the mm -hmm. restroom. Mm -hmm. At one point, He's, he's uh, breastfed, you know, I'm just being real, like, mm -hmm. how could this be the creator of the heavens and the earth? Mm -hmm. And so once I started hearing about what's called at tawheed you know, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's, that's what really drew me into, okay, 
this is this is something. I want I want to learn more about this. So you mean? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam. This is your brother Imam Ahmed Al Hadi Sharif. Inshallah, tonight we will start our program, very interesting program, the program that we named the Journey to Islam. Many brothers have suggested for me in the past that we have many brothers who, alhamdulillah, in our center, one of the good things is that we have many brothers and sisters who accepted Islam, convert to Islam, or whatever you want to call it, or revert to Islam. So inshallah, we're going to start that program called Journey to Islam. Inshallah, they will speak to us about their journey to Islam. Tonight, we have a special guest with us, Brother Josh Angel also known as Mu'ad, Brother Mu'ad Angel. Brother Mu'ad is one of the great brothers that we have in our community, and he's revered to Islam. He's a former musician, inshallah. He's going to speak to us about his life tonight. Welcome, Brother Josh, to the show. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Barakallahu feek. Inshallah, we'll start the program. I would like to ask you first question, inshallah. First question for Brother Josh is to tell us about himself. Tell us about yourself. All right, so first I would say uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to, you know, ask me about my journey. Um, it only took him five years to get me to finally do it. MashaAllah. We've been talking to you for a while. Alhamdulillah, now we're actually doing it. So, uh, as he said, my name is Joshua Angel. I'm 27 years old. I'm a happily married man. I have two beautiful children, and I hope to have many more. Um, currently, I work in the medical field, and I'm just a normal person like everyone else. As he mentioned, I did come from a uh, former life, a former career as a musician, and uh, now I pursue mostly uh, just homesteading and farming and just trying to live a more natural, uh, sustainable life. Inshallah, inshallah, that's very beautiful. Uh, this is a great ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever gave. It's a ni'mah of Islam that he had guided you to Islam and we have guided us all to Islam. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every day that 17 times a day mm. we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen 17 times or more we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. So this is the greatest favor, bounty that Allah can give. فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ وَمَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to guide him good, goodness with him, he guides him to Islam. Alhamdulillah, we are so grateful to Allah that He had guided us and He had guided you yeah. to Islam. So inshallah, we would start the program. We're going we're gonna to interview him inshallah. We want first to tell us about your story before Islam. I know you were a former musician. A uh, few I know about your life. So I want you in detail, a little bit detail, to tell us about who was Josh before sure. Muhammad, before sure, Islam. Sure. Absolutely. So I mean, I would think that... Um, Generally speaking, most people who are watching this, if you're uh, not a Muslim yet, inshallah, someday Allah will guide you, um, that music is very, I mean, even throughout the world, music is something that is common amongst all people. So my, my um, upbringing was no different. Uh, I was raised with music playing day in and day out. There was never a day that went by except that the music was turned to 11 and you're knowing your neighbors next door. And that's just how I lived. And then when I was 15 years old, I told myself I had my whole entire wall covered with musicians. I mean, you couldn't tell me the color of my wall. It was just musicians, whether they be guitarists, drummers, vocalists, singers, you name it. And it was my life. I was 101% dedicated to it. I remember clearly like it was yesterday. I was 15 years old. I looked at those people on that wall, and I said, someday I'm going to become the greatest guitar player that ever lived. And from that moment on, I literally dedicated every single moment of free time that I had without exaggeration to that. I mean, literally, as you know, Imam Ahmed knows, I had two guitars in my bathroom. That tells you how dedicated I was. I mean, literally, uh, before Islam, you know, I had girlfriends, of course, and literally the girlfriends would get jealous because I would tell them, go away, because I want to play guitar. I mean, I would wake up, my guitar would be in my hand, my aunt would still be on, I would sit up and I would start playing from there. And I would, there was guitars in my car, if I was going to get some milk out the fridge, I had a guitar in my hand. I mean, that's how dedicated I was. And I did that for many, many, many years. And then uh, some things kind of led to me getting maybe a little bit discouraged. Uh, we just couldn't get a, keep a band together. And right around that same time, I met uh, a Muslim. Uh, 
Okay. Before that, inshallah, yes. we're going to hear enough about it. Mm. And uh, your background, your family, yes. how you've been raised. Tell us about sure. your early childhood. Yeah, I mean, once again, uh, I was raised to be a Christian. My mom had to drag me out of bed every Sunday. I hated going to church, like most kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to sleep in on my day off before I had to go back to school. But, you know, she used to drag me to church every, every Sunday. She, we'd have to do choir, you know, we'd sing in the church. We'd do all the things that we we're supposed to do as, uh, you know, taught as Christians. And um, at the same time, I always had doubts. Like, things didn't just necessarily make sense to me as to, you know, the Trinity and things like that of that nature. So by the time, even though I was still, you know, of course, under my mom's supervision, so I got to do what she tells me, by the time I was 12, 13, I had already basically given up on Christianity and just said I was going to be, I guess you would say agnostic, where I believed in God, but I didn't have a true religion that I, you know, I deemed that was mine. Does that make sense? Yes, that's, that's, that's a beautiful journey. Tell us about uh, your perception about Islam. What did you, did you know Islam when you were maybe a teenager and after that, even before you accepted Islam, what did you believe about the Muslims? Who are they? What, what, I want to understand also, and my, my viewers to understand, to know what the other side of the, of the, what they call it, the river, what is in there, what they think about us. What do you used to think about the Muslims? Sure. So, um, like most people, or at least a good majority of them, uh, if you're ignorant of something and you're taught to fear that thing, you have no really no other choice really uh, except to fear it if you don't have proper knowledge of it so i do remember being in high school and there being threats of one in particular where it was said that the muslims were planning to hijack the school buses <laughs> so and they're going to blow them up uh. and me being 15 years old freshman in high school mm -hmm. i didn't know anything i didn't had no muslim friends no family members were muslim mm -hmm. and so all i knew was what i heard and i was a man i like to see one of the muslims try to you know, I'm, you know, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight for myself and my family. So mm -hmm. that's all I knew. And uh, eventually, uh, you know, like I said, once again, going back to I finally met a Muslim. And it took me meeting that person for me to have a completely different perspective on what Islam was. Before then, mm -hmm. I was, I, I was not, not afraid as if, uh, you know, I'm not going to protect myself, but cautious and leery of like, are these people really out to harm us? Uh -huh. You know? That's kind of what so, my perception was. So do you think that perception is the dominant perception of a non-Muslim? Uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, it just, it's, yes, I would say for the majority, but um, that goes back to a lot of times, like even in my own workplace, when I first began working there, many people called me rad radical. People called me because I had a beard. You know, they call me radical, extremist. Watch out for him. He prays. He prays all the time, mm -hmm. you know, in the parking lot. He's a little weird, you know. He's praying all the time, and he's got a big beard, you know. And but after a few years of being a honest Muslim and practicing the teachings of Al Islam, mm -hmm. they have come to say that I am one of the best employees, co-workers, and they they love me and they would hate for me to leave. That's great. That's great. So, so that's really I could say messed up bad image uh, mm. about Islam. You being there, you knowing the culture, you knowing how they think, what do you think that as a, the Muslims, the community can change, at least can start the change, that image, uh, that perception that many, I don't want to say all because some of them are very understanding, some of them are sure. tolerance, when they come to the masjid completely that they shocked when they hear about Islam, when they question, because so many things is fed through online media, sometimes when you Google only about Islam, you wonder yourself, is this the religion that I know, religion that is studied? So much crazy things. Some of the things they say, we, we, we worship moon god. Mm. Some of the people they say, we worship idol that is in the box in the Kaaba. <laughs> so many, you know, so many misconceptions about Islam when sure. we only worship one god. We worship the creator, the stain of this world. We worship what they call, and, and uh, the Christians they call him Godfather. We worship mm. that God. We call him Allah in Arabic, which is the creator, sustainer of this world. So what, what can I, as a Muslim-born immigrant, come to this country, do in order to... That is a job that we have sure. to fulfill it. Sure. But at least to them to understand the Islam and the Muslim, that we're not threat to no one. We're just trying to live our life. We're just trying to save our, and protect ourselves. 
for anyone from the hellfire, from the punishment of Allah. We want the good. We always say like uh, the person who, you know, who, who is a Muslim, is somebody like you has a cure to a, a dangerous disease. If you keep it to yourself, mm. then you did not benefit no one. Sure. So what do you think we, we should do now? We need your advices. Sure. What we should do in order at least to change some of those people, make them sure. understand. So everything goes back to firstly, knowledge. Mm -hmm. Before you can act upon a thing, you have to know what that thing is to begin with. Mm -hmm. So you go back to the fundamentals of the religion and you learn how to be honest, truthful, sincere, genuine, mm -hmm. uh, and, and things of that nature. And really all I can do is speak on experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I first accepted Islam, I was very like trying to quote from the Quran, quote from the Hadith, Mm -hmm. This, that, you know, and just verse after verse after verse after verse. For, and for I realized, yeah. For, for non Muslims. For non Muslims, for my family, immediate family, my mom, my, you know, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, everyone, like my best friends. You got to check this out, man. This is heavy <laughs> stuff. This is really, this is, you know, it's real. Mm -hmm. And it just pushed them further and further away because a lot of times we know that people have gotten to the point where they say, actions speak louder than words. And mm -hmm. that's one thing that drove me away from Christianity as a young child, as a young, a young man growing up, is that I heard all this good talk, mm -hmm. great stuff, great uh, morals and ethics and great teachings, but I didn't see any implementation of it within the church. Mm -hmm. Or I seen it the one day on Sunday and Monday through Saturday, there, there's no, implement no implementation, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it goes back, I, I, I quickly realized that uh, you know, it's one thing to sit there and talk someone's ear off and push this, you know, verse after verse down their throat. People don't care about that. What they care about is seeing your actions. And, and at, again, sorry cutting you. Sure, they don't even sure. believe what you quote. They don't mm, believe the right. Quran that you're quoting for. Mm. So, uh, but the people, and as, as I was telling uh, Imam Muhammad earlier, is that the people who are closest to me, have now become the most furthest from me. And the people that were the furthest from me have now been the closest to me. Mm -hmm. And I believe it goes back to the implementation. Like, okay, this isn't working. You know, they say, uh, there's, a, there's a saying that says, insanity is to do the same thing over and over and over and over again, expect different results. Mm -hmm. So to do the same thing, you know, verse after verse, hadith after hadith, and no one is just pushing people further. I'm like, okay, there's something I'm doing wrong here. Mm -hmm. Let me just practice it for my own self. Let me learn my own religion and just practice what it says because people are going to that's what people are going to notice show them show them what, what exactly. Islam is that's what usually people care about people they don't care what you say they care yeah, what there's you no way there's no weight to it yes you know this this way it, it has the weight of a feather when you speak there's no yeah. weight to it yeah well we say like and uh, for example how one of the ideas is that to be a muslim you want to remove the uh, that perception wrong image of islam be a muslim to show them if your neighbor knows you're the greatest neighbor that they mm. had they know that you're a nice guy you take care of them you always smile for them sometimes you're on holidays on Eid take gifts to them if mm. they know that when they hear the news when somebody else tells them about Islam and Muslims hey no I have a Muslim neighbor I know him it's not like that when your co-workers knows that who you are then they know they will know Islam the way you react what you are if they know all of those things you don't have to speak a lot I mean, so, mm -hmm. this is this isn't just theory this is mm -hmm. real life i have example after example example where once again like my mother before islam me and unfortunately me and my mother didn't have the best relationship mm -hmm. now after islam my mom at first was very very scared she mm -hmm. thought i was gonna be a, a, you know <laughs> an extremist i'm gonna blow myself up i'm gonna do all kinds of crazy stuff mm -hmm. but after once again how can I give something to someone that I personally don't have? So I had to learn my own, own religion for myself. And once I started practicing it, to this day, now my mom will defend me and defend Muslims. Mashallah. When people come in Sweet. and they talk bad about Muslims, she says, hold it right there. Stop. My son is a Muslim, and he's the best son that I, ever, I could ever ask for. Mashallah. Mashallah. That's, that's great. That's great. So how was, that was my next question mm. you went to. So you, you mentioned your, your mother. How was mm. your relationship? Tell me about your, both of your parents. How was your relationship with them before and after Islam? Sure. So Immediate, um, immediate family. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, me and my mother, we had a rocky relationship for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I got drugged down here from Wisconsin. That's where I'm originally from. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I, I, basically, she picked me up from juvenile. I ran away. I didn't want to come to Tennessee. I wanted to stay with my family. But 
I ran away, and they went, cops went up catching me, and <laughs> my mom picked me up from juvenile and drug me down to Tennessee. So that, that left a bad taste in my mouth for a while, and that really led to the, uh, us not having a very good relationship. Uh, but like, once again, after a slam, I realized the rights of the, the, the mother, especially, of course, both parents, but ex especially the mother, and I learned the rights that she has upon me, mm -hmm. and that is what's bought, you know, after I, Allah's I help. remember you always ask, you just ask those questions. Yes. You always speak about that. Yeah, uh -huh. afterwards, you know, that, that really helped me create the relationship that I always wanted to have with my mother. Now, in regards to my father, I didn't actually meet my father till, I, till a month before Islam. Mm -hmm. So I was so 22 was, years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I never met him, never spoke to him. Um, and then one day, uh, I decided to take a trip to Illinois, where I knew that he lived, mm -hmm. and I met my family, and all his side, you know, my, his mother, his sisters, brothers, cousins, etc. Mm -hmm. And I told myself I had a whole week, mm -hmm. and like I said, I didn't have his number, I didn't know him, I had one week, and I said, I am determined, I will, I, if I have to miss my flight, mm -hmm. I will do so, because I'm not leaving here until I meet my father. Mm -hmm. So the day before, the, actually the night before my flight, mm -hmm. I finally got after, because the, the thing is, is that my family wasn't even in contact with my father. So it took about a week to get in touch with him. Once I uh, finally got his number, you know, I contacted him. We got together that night mm -hmm. and things were great. You know, I was like, you know, let bygones be bygones. You know, that's in the past. You know, I'm growing up now. It's okay. For whatever reason, why weren't there? Not a problem. And then... A month later, I accepted Islam. I didn't mention it to nobody. I didn't mention that I had any intentions of accepting Islam. Mm. But, I, you know, once I accepted Islam, about a month afterwards, I called my father. Because mm -hmm. I actually but, kept it hidden for a little bit. I was a little bit scared. Uh -huh. So I actually kept it hidden. Mm -hmm. But I called him and I said, hey, Dad, uh, I got something to tell you. Mm -hmm. And I was like... I'm not gay, so don't think I'm gay. Because <laughs> I know it's probably your first thing about to uh -huh. He's like, oh, thank God. And then I said, I'm a Muslim. He said, that was my second worry. And then mm -hmm. it actually, and then unfortunately it turned into a bit of an argument where he said, I'm going to take you back to Christianity. And I'm like, dude, you've known me less than a month. And now you're going to try to make a Christian, you know. And unfortunately, my father doesn't speak with me because I am Muslim. Five years later, he still thinks that I... He's afraid that I support radicalism, or I am a part of that. You know, so, when you were the first one who against radicalization and radical. Mm, exactly. Yes, you ha you gotta you gotta have to stay in touch with him. You gotta have to do your parts. Sure. You know, in Islam, there's no way that the rights of the parents would go away, even if they're not a Muslim. Their rights will not go away, even if they die. Their rights will not go away. You have to make dua, pray for them if they die Muslim. So. Allah says that do not obey them you do not obey no one none of the creations when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always Allah first but at the end about dunya about life about contacting him always try to, to do your part your part is to be obedient to him to sure. be gentle to him to be nice to him to, to help him whenever you can to take care of him whenever you can and show him the Islam and at the end Allah is the one who gives hidayah you don't have hidayah in your hand you don't we don't have it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who give and do not give up asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him that hidayah Absolutely. insha'Allah so now tell us about your journey to Islam when was the first thing that you heard about Islam and how was the process in little detail insha'Allah and uh, let the viewers hear about that insha'Allah the brothers yeah I mean uh, it goes back to uh, I was working uh, with, with a Muslim and at the time I was a very dedicated musician and I lived a very different life than what a Muslim lives. And I, just out of curiosity, you know, if you get around someone long enough, you start asking questions. You're like, so, you know, I wake up in the morning, I blast music, and that's what gets me up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you wake up and you pray. That's mm -hmm. so weird, right? So then, like, you start to ask more questions, and then when you start hearing the oneness of Allah, mm -hmm. His unique oneness, that there is nothing... There's nothing like unto him. And you, you think back, because I, I remember thinking when I was a kid, back, you know, back in the days when I was drugged to Sunday, you know, Sunday school and church and all these things, I'm like, 
how, how is God a man? You know, a man, he needs so much. He needs to eat. He needs to sleep. He needs to use the restroom. <laughs> At one point, he is, he's uh, breastfed. You know, I'm just being real. Like, mm -hmm. how could this be the creator of the heavens and the earth? Mm -hmm. And so once I started hearing about what's called etawheed, you know, uh, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's, that's what really drew me into, okay, this is, this is something. I want to I learn more about this. So you and, wish you mentioned, sorry. You mentioned the part of the Tawheed that mm. was someone pulled you. You know, that's what the Prophet ﷺ said when you give a da'wah to a non-Muslim. You speak to them about Tawheed, about oneness of Allah. That would make sense to them. And what the Prophet ﷺ, when he sent Mu'adh, he said, Mu'adh, you go into mm. Yemen, a people of book. Let the first thing that you call them to is a Tawheed, about oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship the creator, the saint of this world, unify him in his worship, in his lordship, in his beautiful names and attributes. So, you think, did you, uh, did you feel that impact? Because so many you know, Muslims, when they want to speak to, to a non-Muslim, they would start downgrading the religion, speaking mm. about the mistakes. Mm. That would also create a lot of times debate sure, that everybody sure. tried to win. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, you just, once again, just go back to, just explain the oneness of Allah. I mean, it's so simple. It, it, your heart just can't help mm -hmm. but just uh, accept it so naturally. Mm -hmm. Because as we know as Muslims, Allah created the fitrah. He created mm -hmm. the natural disposition of mankind. Mm -hmm. And that's what Allah created us to, to believe. He didn't create us to believe in multiple gods, but just one singular God. I don't have to go to this particular individual and ask for forgiveness because he might be more sinful than me. Right. Or maybe he gets sick and he, he right. takes a day off. Nah, mm -hmm. hey man, I just messed up. I did a big sin. I need someone to ask for forgiveness. What am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? He maybe took vacation. Whereas, you know, I can go straight to the one who created me. There is no one between me and him. And if I need anything, mm -hmm. if I beg for anything, whether it's forgiveness, whether it's I need money, white, whatever, kids, children, mm -hmm. I go to him and him alone. Right. So what, when did you make the final decision that you need to become a Muslim? Yeah, it was, I mean, I, I remember like as yesterday, man. Uh, mm -hmm. I was sitting in the, uh, as I explained this story many times, man, Ahmed. I was sitting in the driveway five mm -hmm. years ago. In fact, uh, November sixth, mm -hmm. just last month, uh, was my fifth year anniversary. I took, a, I took my shahada, the testimony that I do believe in the oneness of Allah without any partners, and I believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last of all the messengers. I took my shahada on November sixth, two thousand twelve. I was sitting in my driveway. It was a late night, mm -hmm. and I called, I looked up uh, the mosque on Google, and I mm -hmm. said, "Hello, I'm looking for the imam," and it just <laughs> happened to remember. be this this, this, this uh, great imam next to me, mashallah. <laughs> and uh, I said, "Yes, I'm looking for the imam." And you know, it, it, for, for people who don't get what I what I'm saying, mm -hmm. imam is the proper word. Imam is uh, your faith, and so I said the wrong word. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I'd like to become a Muslim. And the following night, I came in this very masjid, this very mosque. Inshallah. And he, may Allah reward him, gave me shahada in front of a bunch of brothers. And how was, how was, how did you feel when you were taking a shahada? Man, I felt so, honestly, man, I, I, I felt so, like my heart had never been so clean in its entire existence, man. I mean, as far back as I can remember, I just felt, I just felt like, I, I don't know, it's, it's just so hard to explain. Like, for instance, mm -hmm. and I didn't even know, and, mm -hmm. but when I went home, I tried picking up my guitar, and it felt wrong. Mm -hmm. And no one had even told me. I had never even known that music was not... Uh, it. You know, but as soon as I took my shahada, I went home that night, I picked up the guitar, and it was like I was picking up filth. And I just felt so bad. And nobody came to you. Nobody. To you, Subhanallah. So, Subhanallah. The fitrah. The fitrah. That's the beauty of the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The human being regularly created to pure. He knows right and wrong. Even though some, uh, some uh, reverts struggle with the music. Mm. And they're trying to connect that to Islam. For you being a Muslim does not connect to for you playing music you could play music and 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 be a muslim it's not sure. connected so it's not part of faith some people they believe that they cannot give up that life of style music and all of that then they say you can't be a good enough you have to strive you have to struggle at least accept islam then things would go slowly you know? sure 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Islam is a filter. So, so the feelings was like, wow, feeling like you felt I, peace. I just, I, yeah, absolutely. Like basically, I mean, music is where a lot of people they mm-hmm. look for many things. They mm-hmm. look for serenity, peace, tranquility. They look to feel connected to something, mm-hmm. uh, a part of something, uh, something bigger than themselves. And I thought that nothing could give me the feeling that music did. Mm-hmm. However, when I prayed my first salah, my first prayer, and I didn't even, like I said, I didn't know Arabic. I literally had a little notebook where I'd say, Allah Akbar, and then I'd look at the, <laughs> the little notebook and say, okay, what do I got to say now? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I just keep doing it. Okay, now I got to bow. Just that, even though it wasn't, you know, a perfect, a perfect prayer, it gave me a greater sense of peace and, and serenity and tranquility than I had ever felt with any song. And I was like, this just, this just can't be. I just, it, was, it was so shocking to me. Mm-hmm. And then it just became where that excel, like, it just, that's what made it so easy to just, to just leave everything off is because you have what's called el khushu, just your, your tranquility and your prayer. And that's what was so easy to leave off the guitar playing because mm-hmm. I, I had found something that gave me peace like nothing I'd ever experienced. Alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm. So, mashallah, that's beautiful. The, the next question that I wanted to ask you, after you have reverted, we don't, it's better to say revert mm. because you're coming back to sure. your nature. After you have reverted to Islam and you become a Muslim, a lot of people, they assume that you would change. You would be an Arab, you would be somebody else. Mm. Or clearly, you sure. look like an American guy. Yeah, By the why does I come? <laughs> yeah, those who was wondering his color hair, Islamically, it's fine. Uh, it's halal, as long as it's not black. Uh, mm. so, so tell us, did the person change completely? I mean, as in person, can you just be American and still a Muslim? Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, you go back to the definition of what a Muslim is. Mm-hmm. When you look up the word Muslim, doesn't say Arab. Mm-hmm. Doesn't say that. It says one who submits to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Mm-hmm. So everything is Muslim. Mm-hmm. The trees, the birds, the clouds, because everything is under the commandment of Allah. Mm-hmm. So to be in complete harmony with mm-hmm. the universe is to be a Muslim. Absolutely. So you don't have to be an Arab. You can be, if you are one who obeys the commandments of Allah and his messenger, you're a Muslim. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're poor, if you're rich, if you're black, if you're white, it doesn't matter. So, yes, so in short form, the person can be a Muslim and can be who he was. Sure. The only thing that you changed, the Prophet said, mm. Islam is mm. not to take over. Islam is to change, to change the people, to, to change the hearts, mm. to perfect the good thing that they already have. Utemmim is complete. Something that existed before Islam, but Islam came to perfect it and beautify it. Well, it's like a filter. It's yeah. like when you get your water filter. Mm-hmm. Water by itself is pure, wholesome, mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. But there are chemicals, there are different things within this water that can contaminate it and mm-hmm. poison you. Mm-hmm. And Islam is that filter where you have things inside of you, jealousy, envy, greed, mm-hmm. all these different things. And Islam comes to filter it out and mm-hmm. leave you in the purest form. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's beautiful. So my, my next question would be uh, your life. Compare it. I want you to compare your life before Islam sure. and your life after the Islam. Man, uh, I can say for one thing, man, mm-hmm. there is, uh, I have, and I praise Allah for this every day, yeah. that I do not have even, uh, mm-hmm. man, th- I had so much drama in my life before. prior to Islam. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can give an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, this, is, this is no exaggeration. I, one of the things that really led me to Islam, personally, mm-hmm. other than, as I mentioned earlier, Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, mm-hmm. was when I heard that alcohol was forbidden. I said, sign me up. And the reason being is because I had grown up surrounded by alcoholics, and I had seen what it had done to people. Mm-hmm. I would seen how bad it destroyed your life. And like I said, I was a musician, but I wasn't a big partier. Mm-hmm. I didn't drink but every so often, I really didn't care for drinking. I didn't care for drugs. I was just so focused. But when you're in that lifestyle, mm-hmm. even if you yourself don't do it, you cannot help but be surrounded by it. So even though I wasn't a partier, every one of my friends was. Mm-hmm. Everywhere you go, you go in the music scene, you're going to have parties, you're going to have alcohol, drinks, drugs, all these things. Mm-hmm. And so one of the last 
examples that I can say before I said, man, sign me up. I'm so ready for a change in my life was I was sleeping on my couch. I just chose one night to sleep in the living room and I was sleeping. I had to get up at five in the morning to uh, go to work. And there was these two brothers uh, and they were very, very drunk and they would drink every single day. <laughs> and I, and they knew for the past three years that I had to wake up at five in the morning and go to work. Mm -hmm. So I'm laying on the couch, I'm sleeping, and I'm trying, I'm trying to sleep, and they're arguing, and they're, they're bickering back and forth, and then they're, they're bickering about laundry of all things, like we need to go do laundry, and they're drunk out their mind. And next thing I hear is, I just hear this, I'm like, boom. And next thing I feel, two big drunk dudes <laughs> on top of me at like three in the morning throwing fists. That must punching be. each other, fist fighting mm -hmm. over some laundry. Mm -hmm. And at that point I said, look, man, I just can't do this anymore. I am so sick of being around people who are just, they, they, they're drunk. Yes, they're drunk. They just don't remember. And every day it's the same, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I am apologize, you know. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, that was another reason why I decided to accept the slam, man. The end of the program, two more questions, and I know everyone has to go home. Uh, your lifestyle before Islam. A lot of brothers, when they convert to Islam, when they when they revert to Islam, they struggle giving up those. And I, I I can imagine how much difficulty is is to give up some things. That's why I always tell the brothers, go easy with the reverts. Mm. You 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 don't understand what they go through. They have to change a lifestyle of 30, 40 years sometimes. Mm. It's, it's difficult to do that. So how, how was easy for you uh, uh, yeah. to, to give, up, give up that sign? You're one of the most dedicated that I see. <laughs> mm -hmm. So basically, uh, I mean, for one, it's like, it's like, uh, like medicine. You know, mm -hmm. when you're a child, uh, your mother, your father, mm -hmm. your aunts, your grandmother, they say, take this medicine, you're going to feel better. Mm -hmm. and you're like, no, nah, I taste all, you know, initially you don't want it. Mm -hmm. You know it's going to make you feel better, but you don't want to take it. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with, you know, you think when you, when you cut out music, you cut out drugs, you cut out alcohol, you cut out uh, sex that's not uh, within a marriage, that your life is just going to be one gaping hole, just void of all fun and excitement and fulfillment. And it, it, it really couldn't be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I accepted Islam where I truly felt fulfillment in my life. Mm -hmm. So, was it, what I'm trying to ask is, was it easy? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, well, well, yeah. What, what do you, what do you uh, suggest for the people struggling sure. with those? Um, it goes back to, honestly, uh, what he, it goes back to who is Allah. Honestly, that's, that's the main point, is who is the one that created you? Who is the one that's telling you to do these things, to stop drinking alcohol, to stop doing drugs, to stop mm -hmm. doing these things? Who is it? Is it just a man like you and me who is telling you? Mm -hmm. Or is it the one who created the heavens and the earth? Mm -hmm. So once you figure out who he is mm -hmm. and who he is not, mm -hmm. it is, that, is, that is the path that you take, and then you realize, wow, you know, he's all-knowing. He's all-wise. The greatness of Allah. He, he should know and is, does know way better than I do. I've only been around for 27 years. I've still got a whole lot to learn. Mm -hmm. Allah is he's ever living, always existed. So, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I mean, it goes back to when you learn who Allah is, those things gradually, and some people, everyone's different. Some people can cold turkey things and drop them just like that mm -hmm. at, at the drop of a hat. And other people, it takes time. It's a struggle. struggle. It's a struggle. And, and you might give it up and you might relapse and go back to it. But that's the thing. Then, once again, going back to who Allah is, Allah is al Ghafur al rahim mm -hmm. Allah is the most forgiving, most merciful. So in the instance that you do fall, you do trip, guess what? It's not over. It's not, okay, I'm throwing in the towel. I'm throwing, you know. I'm done, you know, I can't be a Muslim anymore, it's too hard. No, you go back to, okay, who is Allah? Yes, Allah is all-wise, all-powerful, but he's also the most merciful of those who show mercy. So if you make a mistake, you go back and you just continue that path. It's a life of a struggle. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows human being when he created, he did not create perfect. He's going to fall short. Adam, uh, alayhi salam, a prophet of Allah, the first human being, he fell short. Mm. He repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you know that you have Allah who forgives, you have to live the struggle of Islam. Always you fall. Get up and say sorry to Allah and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So inshallah, we're going to finish the program. I'm going to give you uh, two minutes, inshallah. One minute, I want you to address the Muslims who are born Muslims or accepted Islam. What's your advice to them? And finally, I want you to address your fellow uh, brothers in humanity, non-Muslims. Sure. I mean, well, it goes back to we say that the best speech is the speech of Allah. No. The most wholesome, truth, truthful speech is that of Allah. And Allah clearly says in the Quran, He says, I will admonish you the same that I admonished the people before you to have, to have taqwa of Allah, to be fearful and have consciousness, have awareness of who your creator and your maker is. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we all need to have on a consistent basis, is learning who Allah is and learning what our purpose is in this life. And that it's not just a, it's not it's just not about fun and games. Of course, you have your permissible fun, but at the end of the day, this is ground that's supposed to be tilled and planted good deeds. It's like fertile soil, mm -hmm. and you plant your good deeds for the hereafter for them to harvest. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to you, you know, learn who your Lord is, learn your religion. Be very. You have to realize just how great how. How much of a blessing it is to be a Muslim when so many people don't even know the word Allahu Akbar except that they think it's something, something bad is going to happen shortly thereafter. You know what I mean? We say God is greatest and you have that and you know the true meaning of it. And that's, that's, that's a blessing that some people go their entire life and never even say the word Allah, the one who created them. And you have that as a Muslim and you don't you share have that as a Muslim, it. You, have, you don't share that. Mm -hmm. That's a great disservice to your community, man. Okay, the next question. I heard a sound. Everything okay? Okay, why was the sound? So go ahead, uh, address uh, non Muslims. Point to yeah. him, let him know when he's ready. Good. Yeah, um, I mean, of course, I'm going to encourage you to be a Muslim. I'm biased. I, I'm a Muslim, and I. For, I, and for I, non Muslims. Yeah, for non Muslims. I mean, I want everyone to be Muslim because. I firmly believe that Islam is the only way to get to God's ple good pleasure and get to paradise. Mm -hmm. When you worship Him alone, you don't, I mean, even if you look at, you know, the Ten Commandments, the first one says, do not, thou shalt not have any gods besides me. Mm -hmm. And then you look at these different religions, and they'll have different gods. The first one clearly says, thou shalt not have gods besides me, before we get to anything else. Mm -hmm. so. Of course, I'm going to encourage you to look into Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that perhaps you can, you can watch, and this was actually, it helped me tremendously, uh, was a video that I watched right around the time that I accepted Islam, about a week into his, my uh, Islam, mm -hmm. called How the Bible Led Me to Islam by Yusha Evans. Yusha, Y-U-S-H-A Evans. You can find it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Now, there's probably many different versions of it. The one I watched was in Orange County. It's probably the recorded. Oldest huh? The yeah. oldest one. The oldest one, about five, six, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And after I watched that, literally, it was like my jaw was, I couldn't pick my job off the floor. Okay. And so you're like, how could the Bible lead someone to Islam? That just sounds so mm -hmm. weird, right? Mm -hmm. It just sounds, mm, that's odd. I'm not, not too sure about that. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage anyone to go and watch that video with an open heart, an open mind. Empty your cup and basically just for just a f Be open. an hour or two, forget about everything you've learned about Muslims, mm -hmm. good or bad. Just forget it all and just listen to that with an open heart and sincerely pray to God Almighty. Whatever you want to come, Allah, God, whatever, create to the, pray to the creator of the heavens and the earth that he sincerely guides you to the truth. And if, if you say that with sincere sincerity, then inshallah, will be once uh, soon uh, thereafter our brother or sister in Islam inshallah inshallah jazakumullah uh, khair barakallahu feek I would like to thank you the brother uh, brother Josh Angel also the cameraman and the brothers and sisters in Islam all of them yes. for watching this and for being part of this inshallah is uh, very beneficial and I hope that Muslims and non-Muslims would benefit alike from this inshallah, inshallah. for future videos inshallah this is the first session we have a Josh inshallah we're going to invite other brothers for the future uh, videos. Please subscribe to this channel, inshallah. And uh, you will hear more of the stories before and after Islam of the reverts. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.